So I have titled my session as immersion learning. Opportunities, uh, limitations, and attitudes. Okay, maybe I can start with this particular doodle. So this, uh, this, I mean, this doodle uh, uh, is by me. This this doodle gave me the experience of uh, first immersion learning in my life during my fourth standard. My teacher, my science teacher, was trying to teach me uh, the difference between man-made things and natural things, uh, which I was not able to understand at that point of time. I came home and I asked my father, "What is this?" My teacher taught me this, and then I, I mean, then my father tried to explain. I couldn't understand. Then he uh, uh, brought me out of the house, and what I saw was this: what you see on the screen. Uh, so this is exactly I, I was trying. I mean, yesterday evening I tried to recall this particular dude, uh, I mean, uh, scene, and I I made a rough sketch of it. Uh, then uh, my father told, okay, what are the things that has naturally ha happened? I mean, this is how we explain the uh, uh, natural things. I mean, man-made things and natural things. The difference between man-made things and natural things. I think this is the first experience I have had in terms of immersion. My father immersed me in the sea. So this is this is why he started understanding what immersion is. Uh, maybe I thought, okay, people who if, I mean, in, in the group, if you're not sure what immersion is, I think this will help you to understand the basics of immersion. So before I move on to the uh, to the concepts, uh, don't worry, I won't I won't go deep into the research aspects. But I'll I'll try to keep as light as possible so that we can learn something something stays with you for a long period of time. That's the objective. We'll move on. Uh, I mean, I have titled this particular slide as an old concept and a new concept. So immersion is a very old concept, but also a new concept. Let's see how. The term immersion education was first used in Canada in 1960s. So they had a challenge to uh, challenge of teaching French language to their uh, students. So uh, they kind of kind of introduced this word immersion to the world in the 1960s. But I doubt uh, because maybe in India even before that we would have uh, used this kind of methods, but we didn't record it properly. There is no published records available. But because if I, I mean after understanding immersion when I when I uh, read history of India. Uh, Indian education and how it was there even before uh, the Canada I mean, uh, were used in Canada. I think a lot of very parallel uh, learning that were taking place uh, even hundreds of years before in India. Maybe I think we didn't document it anyway. The credit goes to Canada now for using this particular term for the first time. Uh, okay, uh, see, uh, one, I mean, one problem they faced uh, when they introduced this particular idea is there was a kind of a disturbance, a kind of a uh, understanding between immersion and submersion. So, what is this, what is the immersion and submersion? And in this context, uh, immersion, uh, immersion, the medium of teaching is predominantly the target language and the second language. What the language, for example, in Canada, the, the target language is French. So, uh, the teaching was teaching was taking place in, uh, in, in the target language or the second language, if it is English. Uh, but in course, I mean, if it is immersion. In course of learning, the first language or mother tongue is also used as assistance or a kind of a supplementation for students to uh, kind of support their learning a new language. Whereas the submersion is kind of very, very, uh, that's why it's called sink or swim uh, uh, method. Uh, so, I mean, a child is put into a context where uh, the language is very new to him, uh -huh, but uh, you know the goal, he or she will have to understand the uh, language in that particular language no mother tongue no uh, native language is used uh, in the submersion I mean, submersion is not immersion immersion uh, allows the learners or teachers to use the vernacular or a mother tongue uh, to support uh, the learning of a new language whereas submersion was other way around uh, only that particular target language was used for teaching you, you swim or sink Teachers were kind of that 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 was a kind of a approach towards submersion. If you're not talking about submersion here, you're going to focus only on uh, immersion. So immersion gives a um, way for bilingual inculcation. So uh, this this is a pretty interesting uh, thing about immersion, where you can use a couple of languages to learn the target language. Uh, the bilingual inculcation was one uh, very interesting concept. Uh, whereas uh, I mean, in the case of immersion, whereas submersion uh, it's strict. And no other language is used. For example, uh, let me talk, let me think of an immersion. Uh, watching watching a movie. I mean, uh, in, in in a class where uh, students are we taught a new language, and the teacher decides to immerse them into the context of the movie. The teacher plays a movie in that particular language. What is being taught? Uh, at the same time, they have the subtitles in the mother tongue or the first language, native language. So which helps the 
initially at, at the beginning stages it helps the kids to understand what's happening in the movie so the uh, immersion is possible with the help of uh, the mother tongue or the native language anyway this is how this immersion and submersion differs we'll move on okay i mean uh, i told it's old and also a new concept uh, this is a recent uh, article not recent there 2020 during pandemic uh, this article was published in one of the very interesting um, newsletters, online newsletters called Your Story. So uh, they say the future of education is immersive and personalized. So immersion, I mean, uh, what they, I mean, in a nutshell, this particular article um, uh, brings into light the idea that immersion may not be organized in a classroom by a teacher. So immersion is personalized, and students can uh, students can come out with kind of kind of a immersion experience on their own so that's what he meant by immersive and personalized education they become more immersive and personalized anyway so this is what i meant by uh, immersion is an old concept and also a new concept it's a kind of a concept which uh, kind of changes every day uh, that that's something very interesting about immersion with, with technology without technology I mean, every day the idea of immersion grows that's what i meant by an old and a new concept let's move on Okay, well, then what is immersion? I mean, we talked about immersion a lot. What is immersion? I think uh, we'll have to focus on this particular idea a little bit. What is immersion? So immersion, uh, imm see, I mean, if you read the definition on the on the screen, it says immersion is um, uh, not the traditional way of learning anything. Maybe in the case of language, immersion, immerse, immersive method, immersion, immersion learning of language is not the traditional approach to learning. Then, then, then what? What do you mean by traditional approach? So, I think this this particular uh, image will clarify that. So, this was this was I can't. I, I mean, I should also use the word is because even now, uh, in some of the schools and colleges, this is what the learning space is. We have the learning space is the classroom where you have teachers, students, and textbooks. End of story. So, with this, we try to learn. So, this is a, this is what uh, uh, the traditional context here means. If, okay, if this is not the learning place, what is the learning place? When I, when I say learning space, so what is the learning space in terms of immersion? Let us see, okay, uh, um, a learning space which, which helps, uh, which uh, kind of uh, gives scope for the learners to hear, speak, learn the language in authentic everyday context and experience their familiar surroundings. So this is what is learning space which makes the learning immersion. So let us see how uh, an immersion learning space looks like. Uh, so this is how an immersion learning space looks like. Uh, for example, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the learning space, you have all these components. I've just listed a few. There are many other uh, possible components. Teachers and students are also a part of this component. Classroom is also one of the uh, components of this learning space. For example, uh, hospitals. Now, when, when one of the studies, uh, we, uh, maybe uh, in the college where I work, uh, we identified some six students and we sent those students to a nearby hospital. Uh, to talk to the connect a kind of a survey, they prepared a set of questionnaires. So the, the objective was to find out what kind of disease uh, kind of people, what mean, what kind of students, and what kind of disease they approach the hospital. That is from this particular college. So they they had to be there for a while. They 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 did a lot of survey. They uh, they interviewed the doctors there. Uh, maybe interviewed different different authorities there, and they had to come out with a report. So the entire learning here took place in the hospital. That was the learning space. That was the context. The students were able to be uh, go there, conduct a survey, get in, in inputs, and I mean, in course of doing all those things, language was produced. So, likewise, take a shopping mall. You know, the, uh, when, people, when students are sent there to negotiate, negotiate to uh, people there, I mean, people who sell products, maybe they, they bargain or they they, talk, they try to understand uh, how a, a product works and things like that. They, when, I mean, that, this is what exactly an immersion learning space looks like. You can I mean, uh, there's no limit to this. Uh, maybe I think if teachers properly plan, can make any uh, authentic context as an immersion learning space. Uh, predominantly, these are the three aspects uh, which I focus on uh, immersion learning space. So it should give scope for group and team uh, in learning process. So I mean, uh, for example, in the hospital, a group of people, a group of students were there. Sometimes teacher can also team up. There's no limitation that teacher should not be a part of uh, the group. So teacher will also be a part of the group. So learning takes place in a group. So a person is not let alone when learning is happening. So there's a group always. No, I mean, the person learns things in association with the group. 
Second thing is sharing perspective. So this is one very, very important uh, uh, I mean, idea that easily happens in an immersion learning space. But this, for example, there are, there are five students in a group, there will be five different perspectives. So unless the students have a scope to share their perspectives, learning, I don't think learning is possible there. So this uh, learning space, this immersion learning space, automatically gives this particular uh, I mean, advantage of sharing perspectives. Then, and the third thing is language is produced collectively. See, for example, I call I use the word work here because when a person is immersed in an authentic context, the person, what the person does there is called work in this context. So when the person works, automatically there's a scope for use of different kinds of languages. Maybe uh, another very important thing is this bilingual inculcation happening here. In an authentic context, you cannot um, ensure that uh, only one particular language is used. Uh, maybe if you go to a hospital, if you take a hospital for that uh, for that matter, there will be different kinds of people, different people from different parts of the country. So the different languages will be used. So maybe taking a survey there will will give a rich experience of listening to different languages by the uh, by, by the people. So authentic uh, learning environment has that particular advantage of experiencing different languages. So this is what I mean by uh, immersion learning space. Whereas this is um, a kind of a traditional or a conventional learning space in terms of immersion a learning place kind of kind of widens with all these opportunities uh I mean, if if there are any questions people can unmute and shoot your questions no problem you can raise your hands and you can, you can just unmute and ask the question or else you can write down the question um maybe we can discuss that maybe after all this uh, this I after all the presentation is over anyway let's move on okay see the immersion uh learning uh, of course the immersion if you uh, take it seriously and you go deep into immersion you'll find a lot of other uh, ideas uh, with which immersion is made of or immersion is based on uh, for example experiential learning by david Cobb. so this is a pretty interesting um, idea where he, uh, i mean david feels that the educators uh, I mean, uh, kind of kind of creates a situation in the classroom where uh, I mean, uh, the learning happens through actions. People do an action, they experience an action and learning takes place. So it's called learning by doing. This is what experiential learning talks about. So immersion immersion method takes uh, leaves from this particular idea as well. Uh, next is facilitative uh, learning here. The teachers play the role of facilitators. The students are introduced to a complex problem. So in course of solving the problem, students learn language as well as other aspects of other ideas about particular problem for example nowadays colleges colleges connect hackathons so uh, I mean, every group is given a problem so the, using uh, a technology the group discusses and tries to find a solution for the problem so there's a lot of scope of producing uh, language and also they come out with a solution for that, that particular problem so that, I mean, this this is what is facilitative learning where teachers play the role of facilitators this, and the next um, learning type is, you know, I think this is a familiar, uh, adaptive learning is a familiar uh, uh, I mean, uh, theory by Skinner. He says students are supported with uh, customized resources in this particular concept. For example, uh, uh, yeah, this is, well, this is one uh, very interesting thing I, I read a couple of years back. Uh, students with spelling issues and punctuation issues, you know, in course of training them, uh, a, a teacher, I asked them to use a word document and he purposely switched on or deactivated the spell check and grammar check options so in course of uh, uh students typing their ideas on it maybe once they are done with the idea when they when they activate the spell and grammar check uh they were able to identify what are the common I mean, common spellings I mean, mistakes and common punctuation errors they commit so this is uh what adaptive based on adaptive learning method where the teacher kind of kind of uh kind of creates a, a resource with which students learn whatever is intended to learn. Uh, next, very important uh, idea. I mean, I, I feel you know, I mean, out of all these uh, ideas is observational learning. I think this Bobodo experiment is a very famous experiment. It's a psychological experiment. Uh, we'll we'll learn about this. This observational learning is based on Albert Bandura's social learning theory. So this is pretty very very interesting theory where uh, he feels that the environment and the cognitive factors interact and influence human beings to learn uh, a behavior. So that's how okay, we'll see uh, an example here. So for example, uh, people observe and people replicate their observation. So what this Bobodol experiment, um, 
I think it's a, most of you uh, would have known that. Maybe people who are not sure with what Bobo doll experiment is, I'll let me tell you. See, Bobo doll, this is what a Bobo doll is. You see an um, uh, image here in the left hand side corner. Uh, this is a kind of a doll which is uh, very interestingly, it, it fights down. I mean, it, it's, I mean it, we kind of always in a, in a, in a standing position. Uh, whatever you do, it com comes back to the same position. That's how it is structured. Uh, what uh, 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 Bandura did is he identified a group of children and he gave them different experience in terms of Bobo doll. Uh, so one child was made to uh, kind of observe the Bobo doll being handled in a very rude way. A man was kicking it, he was hitting it, he was, he was not handling it properly. Maybe another child uh, maybe in, 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 a, in, a, in a different room was made to see uh, the Bobo doll was, as a companion. The, a person there was communicating with uh, the Bobo doll and trying to trying to emotionally connect with the Bobo doll and whatever. And he was handling it with, uh, with dignity and things like that. So that means attitude of the children handling the bobo doll. So what he says, uh, people observe other people and replicate their, I mean, it's called conditioning. Uh, he, he didn't mean language exactly. It's what condition is, but this particular emotion uh, depends on that. See, when students are put in a learning phase with specific kind, for example, this bobo doll is a different one, they start learning from what they see, watch, and observe. This is what is uh, what uh, Alep Bandura has identified uh, in social learning theory. That's so I think this, I mean, this, uh, uh, I mean, if people, if you can understand this theory, well, I think immersion um, it can be easily understood. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll post a case study here. I want the audience to read uh, the case study and uh, tell me what kind of immersion is happening and what is immersion in this particular uh, case study's point of view, what exactly immersion is. Just quickly go through what is there on the screen and tell me what kind of immersion is happening, if all immersion is happening there. So would you mind providing some clue or something then maybe participants will come up with, you know, answers. Okay, okay, okay. fine, clue, what sort of clue? See, okay, I mean, um, see, uh, students, for, in the first place, students are not inside the classroom. If you see the case today, they're not inside the classroom. So what is the, what, where, where do students are immersed in this context? What is the, uh, what is the learning space? It's not the classroom, but they are, they are instructed to approach a bank. So bank is the context. The students are kind of immersed in the context of a bank. They go to a bank and they ask to start a conversation with the officials there. Why? What, are the, what is the objective of the conversation? So they have to identify different kinds of loan offered to end graduates to establish their startup companies and business. So this is the objective. They will develop the skills. Yes, you're, you're right. Go on. Uh, like uh, how to, I mean, have their startup yeah. first uh, information, like uh, first hand information they'll be knowing uh, how to get a loan, what are the things to be uh, known for developing the um, project. So, in such a way, uh, they'll be learning, sir. Excellent, excellent, ma'am. Thank you so much for that response. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's a very good response. Uh, there are two objectives, yeah, as ma'am rightly mentioned, they'll go talk to the so there. one second, there are actually yes. more responses in the chat box. Oh, I see. Uh, give me okay. a minute, I'll, I'll open the chat Yes, box. Ms. Sakshi Goel has mentioned about the, you know, speaking confidently. Yeah, real, real life experience. Okay, fine. See, uh, the point here is, in this case study, the immersion happens uh, in, in, in a context where students uh, kind of, kind of they, they, they go to a bank. They start a conversation with the officials there. Uh, they, they, I mean, the objective is to identify what kinds of different loans. See, the, the, there are two objectives. You ask me to what, what I mean the hidden objective here is one is language, of course. In a bank, uh, they'll have to use the language what they understand. They, they learn this context specific language when they talk about or discuss about loans and other finance issues. One is language. And second thing is they get information. Two objectives. So, this particular immersion helps students to. Uh, I mean, understand language in, in context, number one, and understand information in this context. So this is uh, case study one, maybe uh, a direct exposure, maybe a students are sent to a bank to perform a task and I mean, other teachers, I mean, maybe after they come back uh, to the classroom context and then they make a presentation and what are different kinds of uh, loans and etc, etc, etc. So this helps uh, students to understand the information in an authentic context. So that's the immersion here. Okay, next is case study two. Uh, maybe I, I quickly can someone read this and tell me. Similarly, I'll, I'll, I'll keep track of the chat also. 
uh, maybe if you can talk to me better maybe if you can unmute and tell what uh, this is a this is a different kind of uh, uh, context a group of seven final year english literature english. students from university of madras decided to go to do a project on identifying the problem space during learning in the english language by the high school students dwelling in the fishermen's settlements near kasimeru a small place in the north of chennai where predominantly fishermen families live in the first phase of the project they accessed the schools in that locality and surveyed the students on their learning conditions materials they used to learn and how often they read authentic they read authentic material and text based on the analysis of the survey they concluded that number 1 the learning conditions school environment and classrooms are very noisy and there are a lot of distractions number 2 students hardly read textbooks pre prescribed to them and most of them don't bring textbooks to class classes number 3 only 3% of the students participated in the survey and authentic materials such as english newspapers and magazines okay. thank you thank you for reading that out um, so this is actually a, a case study where uh, the objective is not to learn language here the objective is to identify do something to do with language how a group of students uh, in one particular locality uh, when hani english language that's the, that's the project uh, this i mean i i take this as an example for immersion because there are two different kinds of immersion happening here one is uh, maybe a group of students i mean uh, from one particular university they go to a different place where there's a different culture maybe one particular community of people live so uh, this this is actually what exactly immersion is maybe you, you when you immerse uh, uh, your students in a context they try to meddle with a different culture uh, cultures if possible and different uh, conditions maybe which they are not they are not familiar with so i mean uh, this particular case study what i why with the reason for bringing up here just to make you understand that okay these are the this is some of the scope uh, that like, i mean uh, uh, immersion gives um, Uh, when 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 something is done in this particular way, maybe beyond the college, beyond the classroom, students are uh, kind of kind of placed in a context where with with a specific requirement or specific uh, kind of kind of study, uh, where where they come out with very interesting. I mean, see see the, if you see the output, the immersion has worked out very well. They have done a survey, so the output what the, the those three points is what. They, what is written on the case study, but beyond this, uh, kind of living with people there. They have to understand the way where they live because this is a place in Chennai where uh, predominantly fishermen uh, families live. They have to they have to uh, meddle with different kind of language, a different type of language uh, people speak here, and maybe they have lived in a context where people I mean pe people follow different cultures. So I mean, uh, to what is intended to study is one aspect, and second thing is what what happens to them when they are immersed in that particular context. so this is one very interesting thing about immersion which this is the reason why immersion grows every day the idea of immersion is never old because of this particular uh, property of immersion so now let us uh, i mean based on these two case studies i think we are, we understood what immersion is and how it would be practically done in a classroom context or maybe maybe in 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 in, a, in any study context let us uh, now talk about as uh, opportunities uh, connected to immersion so this is i think this is what my title is i think i, I spend little time in understanding uh, with you what immersions so now let us talk about immersion okay immersion what are the opportunities that immersion brings the first very important immersion that almost all the studies i refer to kind of uh, kind of demarcated is this immersion enhances the pace with which students learn language immersion I mean, we, we now we have understood what immersion is how what what will be immersion learning space when students learn in that kind of an immersion space learning space the pace in which they learn language uh, is I mean, kind of, it improves this i think i mean uh, almost whatever uh, reference i took i think almost all the reference pointed on this particular idea that the pace in which students learn the language is higher in the immersion learning space second thing is uh, the ability to use a language in authentic and real time context see this is 
this is one thing which uh, is evidently shown. See, classroom, uh, of course, we teach language in the classroom. We give uh, kind of activities in the classroom where people make presentations, they uh, talk and everything. Fine. Everything is fine. But immersion uh, goes a step ahead when students are kind of immersed in a context. So uh, they, they use language in that particular real time context and that kind of that eliminates the we see maybe I, i've seen a lot of lot of uh, students they do a very good job in the classroom when they when they uh, for example when they in, in the real time context they they couldn't do perform well because of other inhibitions classroom is a very comfortable place known crowd maybe the context when you immerse them in a real time context that becomes a new space for them and uh, maybe a conversing becomes a problem whereas the learning itself takes place in an immersion context, an immersion space with different kinds of people. The ability to use language uh, in authentic uh, context enhances. So this is again uh, a finding from different studies. Uh, immersion, immersion improves listening comprehension ability. So this is this is another very very interesting uh, uh, finding. That is, see when 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 we immerse our kids and our, our children in a, in, a, in a context. For example, in whatever learning learning space it is, different any any context that you have in mind. So predominantly, they listen to others. I mean, listening in an authentic context is totally different from listening to a classroom, a teacher. Because teacher, uh, can come, of course, it's a focused teaching. The teacher teaches what student needs. I mean, they listen to whatever. That's kind of a straightforward listening. Whereas in an authentic context, listening of different sorts happen because there's a lot of noise in the first place. I mean, there are different kinds of people different kinds of ideas being uh, kind of translated here I mean, in, in, the, in, in an authentic context. So listening comprehension ability improves. So maybe a real time listening with all those, I mean, uh, I mean kind of all these, you know, with all the characters of a real time listening. So this improves the listening comprehension ability of the learners. Uh, by merely making them learn language in an immersion way, they learn the listening, listening comprehension ability, which is not that uh, effective in a classroom context. Uh, the next uh, thing is the real okay, the real time engagement. This is actually a psychological thing that happens to students. So as they learn a real time context, not in the classroom all the time, but when you immerse them in the real time context, uh, they build a kind of a confidence where they produce language even after after their school or after their graduation when they go to a real time context. There's so much of a difference because they have learned language uh, in an immersion space. So um, convert I mean, conversion. Conversation or interaction doesn't uh, kind of it, it doesn't fear them, and they have the confidence to produce language in a very easy way. So this is a very important uh, scope that we have with immersion. Uh, I mean, this is uh, this. I think sometimes people take this but this idea as a kind of a limitation also, which I'll talk a little later. But uh, I think this is good in the, in the in the in the globalized context. I think this is good. Immersion helps students to understand the culture of the land of, and the language. Uh, for example, uh, when when students are put uh, in a totally a different context, for example, a group of people who are not uh, kind of familiar to one particular culture, one particular language is put into that particular uh, space, immersed in that particular space where that particular language and culture is used. So uh, they, in course of learning the language, they understand the culture also. So this is, this is actually a scope, an opportunity that immersion gives. Maybe you learn the culture because language and culture are inseparable entities. You cannot learn only the language and discuss the culture. When you learn a language, automatically the culture comes with it. That's how English, we, we understand English that way. So this is an opportunity and also a, a, a limitation that we'll, uh, we'll discuss a little later. Maybe after five minutes, five ten minutes, we'll discuss how this particular idea is a limitation. So as I know, we have, we, there are five. There are many many opportunities. I think these are the five comprehensible uh, opportunities that immersion learning presents to us. One is space, then ability to use the language in an authentic real time context, listening improvement of listening comprehension ability, real time engagement, uh, which improves the confidence level of the you know, students uh, in in using or producing language. The final thing is they learn different culture. It comes as an add on. Maybe they they learn the language. Uh, of that particular context, and I mean, with that they understand the culture also. How, for example, corporate when they when you immerse them into a company, you send a group of students to a company, uh, a corporate company. So they go, they participate in the actions there, and they try to learn the culture of that particular context. How people behave in a corporate uh, world is that culture they learn. So uh, immersion brings all these five 
most important opportunities with it. We want, okay, I wanted to show this particular learning pyramid, which is also called the learning cone, where um, they, they try to organize different methods and uh, they call it passive or active learning. For example, through lectures, uh, students learn 5%. By reading, they learn 10%. By audiovisual, by listening, listening or doing audiovisual uh, material, they learn 20%. Uh, when someone demonstrates, for example, in a lab, uh, when a teacher demonstrates how something takes place, they learn 30 percentage. So all these four different ways of learning, is, they call they have, they have kind of demarcated them or classified them as passive learning. Because there's there's no much for the students to do. It's just, just to participate in the learning. Whereas uh, the other three, a discussion group, okay, they learn something, they come sit in a group and discuss their learning. They try to uh, put forward their perspective, understand others' perspective. In this particular context, 50% of learning takes place when practice, when they do that. For example, they learn how to do, I mean, uh, practically learn something, and they, when they come and do that, when they participate in the real time, I mean, they learn the 75 percentage. When they teach the skill to others, they learn 90 percentage. So, uh, discussion group, practice by doing and teaching others are active learning. So, I think uh, immersion helps us uh, participate in active learning. Where we have scope for discussion, we practice, we do things, whatever we have learned, and we also teach others. We we help others to do. So in, uh, in the learning pyramid, the immersion helps us to do the, the, the most important three aspects: that is discussion, uh, practice by doing, and teach others. So in the learning pyramid, the active learning is satisfied by immersion using immersion method. Anyway, now we want, of course, whatever method. Uh, uh, whatever positives that are attached to a method, there will be some kind of a limitation because of different factors. Uh, immersion, of course, we all we, we understood immersion is an opportunity where we can teach and we can learn in a different context. Uh, but with that uh, comes a lot of limitations as well, which is indispensable. But let us see to what extent we can uh, understand them and try to try to eliminate the limitations if possible. First a limitation is something as I mentioned, uh, immersion can be a difficult process for students who are not comfortable or familiar with the culture associated with the language. Uh, this, this is again, I mean, I mean, just I mean, a few minutes back we discussed understanding culture as an opportunity. For some people, it might be a, a limitation. For example, we 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 take the case study to where a group of students were. Uh, have to stay in, in a place where fishermen community live and uh, learn. I mean, see, some, for some people who are not comfortable with that kind of a context, so the culture itself will be an impediment. You know, they they won't learn the language. They won't learn anything in that context because of the culture. Culture becomes an impediment here, which which kind of kind of divides students from learning. Sometimes it's, this becomes a limitation. Culture becomes a limitation in terms of immersion. The second thing is uh, immersion will be uncomfortable in a heterogeneous context. So this particular word heterogeneous is very, very close to our Indian Indian education context. We all teachers, I mean, almost all the teachers, we we teach in a heterogeneous context. We don't get students of one kind. We get students from different backgrounds, different cultures, different uh, kind of kind of uh, economic background. There are a lot of I mean, I mean, the heterogeneous is very, very rich in our country. Uh, some people take this as an opportunity when when I have different cultures, different different kinds of students in the class, yeah, learning becomes more interesting. But predominantly people see that this as a kind of kind of an impediment, you know, when because of heterogeneity, uh, learning uh, becomes difficult in the classroom. So immersion may be uncomfortable for heterogeneous context because the uh, uh, main point here is the teacher uh, in course immersion is not present in most of the time. For example, when I send some a group of people uh, to one particular context, maybe a hospital or a shopping mall or, a, or, or, or any kind of settlement. What happens is uh, there are different kinds of students. Not all the students understand the context similarly. Not all the students perform uh, perform in the same way. The heterogeneity becomes uh, an impediment for the real-time immersion to take place. This is one of the limitations in terms of immersion. Uh, the next is, of, of course, this is a very, very interesting, a very, very important thing for teachers to understand. This individual feedback may not be possible. Normally, what happens is again, teachers teachers are not there. Students come back from immersion context, uh, and maybe based on their performance in the class, teachers understand. Uh, sometimes teachers also participate, but most of the time, you know, immersion teachers.
uh, kind, of, kind of design the immersion course and students participate. So this individual feedback becomes a problem. And uh, normally in a group, in, in a class of 60 or 70, um, when they when they are immersed as a group in a context, giving individual feedback based on the learning becomes a very difficult task for teachers. Sometimes they say it's impossible to give individual feedback to the students. This, 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 this is one of the, uh, again, uh, again, a lot of other limitations, but this was predominantly discussed in many papers and journals. Uh, the next, yeah, this is, uh, this, I think, it's a very straightforward uh, limitation. Designing an immersion course may not be affordable to every teacher and student because a lot of first very important thing is time. Uh, time becomes a very, very important uh, uh, aspect yeah, because I mean, uh, immersion learning takes a lot of time. Uh, with time, time constraint, immersion is not 100% possible. So it may not be affordable. Second thing is but immersion is also kind of little costly compared to the traditional way of learning. Maybe uh, introducing them to the context, the logistics, it takes, uh, it involves uh, money. So designing an immersion course, completely an immersion course may not be affordable for every teacher and every student. This is one of the very straightforward limitations of immersion learning. Uh, this is something I'm not exaggerating in this particular uh, limitation. I uh, maybe schools and college, college management may not accept this method as it involves boys and girls working together in an authentic context. Maybe I'm not exaggerating. This is actually uh, uh, maybe we all live in uh, developed cities. Uh, even in a very developed city where there are very developed colleges, this particular attitude it prevails. Uh, nothing is permitted by the management when boys and girls do things together. Uh, again, I'm not exaggerating. Let me give you my experience. I was asked to conduct a lab in a, a nearby college where, to where I work. And when I, I mean, one of the components of that particular lab was group discussion. When I went into the hall, people are made to sit in groups. I found some 10 groups, five groups of only boys and five groups of only girls. When I asked the teacher, how will this work? Why? You know, I said, no, the management uh, opposed only this kind of group formation. We, we cannot include boys and girls. So kind of this, I mean, uh, if in this case, uh, immersion becomes impossible. This is a limitation in terms of, uh, second thing is maybe there are colleges where there are two different ways, one for boys and other for girls. Maybe we live, I mean, of course, things are changing. Of course, it's not, it is not very much visible, but still there are colleges in well-developed cities, this mindset. So these are some of the limitations which I thought I should discuss with you in terms of uh, immersion. Uh, See, I, I, I wanted to talk about the limitations and opportunities because uh, sometimes we believe that, okay, immersion is a very good method. It's very interesting. There's a lot of research done. It is a very effective method. Okay, let me try doing it. Maybe sometimes you should know how to align it to your uh, uh, environment, your limitations. Maybe you you work in a college with some kind of a limitation. So how to kind of, kind of customize uh, immersion learning to your context. Maybe that helps uh, us, maybe our teachers too do this better that's that's a reason the objective why i wanted to talk about limitations also okay we have limitations and opportunities fine any any method will have limitations and opportunities let us see what kind of attitude people have uh, with this particular idea of immersion attitudes for the teacher i mean first there are varied attitudes in terms of there's not one attitude some say it is very good yeah excellent method we'll start doing it some other extremists, they say, no, 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 this, this will not work. I don't think this will work. This is not a method which uh, which I, I should adopt. Maybe the very attitudes. Uh, then comes uh, some teachers. You know, there are some teachers. I, I see some teachers like this. Whatever uh, limitations they have, despite of any kind of limitation, they somehow go do that. They, they, they try their hands, whatever they feel is working, I mean, what they feel might work. Maybe they don't They don't settle down saying it may not work unless they practice it. So we have attitudes like this also. Some teachers, they, they, they might be in a context where there'll be a lot of limitations. In spite of that, they'll somehow find a way to uh, understand a new method and try to implement it in their classroom and see what is working and what not is, what not is working. Yeah, so this attitude is a very, very positive attitude I have seen uh, amongst our teachers. That's all. The next thing is okay. Some teachers are still unconvinced. Nothing wrong in about being unconvinced, no? Because only when you're unconvinced, uh, the research develops. That's what I believe. Yeah, some teachers are still unconvinced about this method, and they believe in the conventional and traditional methods strongly. Uh, 
um, they still believe that no, 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 all these things do not work. Immersion and all, maybe it is, it, it's only kind of a kind of idea that looks good. But when it comes to reality, no, these ideas will not work. Only this conventional and traditional methods work strongly. Maybe, uh, see, if beginners or kind of young teachers have this mindset, it's, difficult, it's easy for us to change. Maybe uh, they'll change. Maybe when an experienced teacher who has done a lot of work in a you know, lot of teaching using this conventional and traditional method, it, it becomes very difficult for them to uh, kind of shift from this to a new method. So that stays unconvinced in their in their in their uh, kind of kind of, in, in their way of working. So this is one of the attitudes which uh, yeah maybe uh, there's nothing wrong in being unconvinced. Uh, I think there should be a lot of research. And when there's a point where we see everything positively happening with a new method, I think it is always good to shift from this conventional or traditional method, or at least use these methods as a supplementation to the traditional methods. Again, traditional using traditional method is not a weakness. Traditional method is perfectly okay. Maybe when there is a method which is working out, I think uh, maybe there's a lot of research uh, as food is working out. Maybe teachers can try using it as a supplementation with their traditional methods. Then I think that will be results. Uh, the other limitation, I think this is a, uh, another pressure we all have. Na? As teachers, uh, they don't go for this method because of other pressures like completing portions. As I mentioned earlier, time becomes a very, very important factor when it is immersion learning. Immersion is a kind of a time consuming process. So teachers say, no, 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 I don't want this method because my, I have portions to complete. And the most important thing is which I should make students test ready. This test readiness is one thing now because, yeah, somehow I make them score 10 on 10. Yeah, my method is the best method. So why should I go for a new method? I complete portions on time and I make my students get 10 on 10. Yeah. I'm done. My job is done. I'm I'm a good teacher. I think we have this kind of this kind of preconceived notions, uh, making our objectives to make them test ready. So we always focus only on the test components in our teaching. So this is again an attitude. You know, this is this is a reason. I mean, this is one of the attitudes why we don't experiment this kind of uh, methods in our classrooms. Of course, I mean nothing nothing. I mean again, I'm not trying to find fault with teachers, but uh, we we have all these pressures. Something complete portions becomes. I mean, we need to give tests, we need to correct papers. I mean, lot of lot of other limitations are the. I mean, which, which uh, is kind of I mean, holding us back and not letting us to go and try it. I mean, uh, one last uh, attitude that uh, was discussed in many many research papers that is, some teachers focus on this method only for their research purpose. <laughs> this is kind of. Uh, yeah, I've experienced this because when it comes to a new method, they want to adopt a method, do a research and publish something or present something and then stop that's it uh, the method gets over there uh maybe uh, this is not i mean uh, not with everyone because uh as far as language uh, research is concerned english teaching language english any language research in india is concerned and this uh, the, the classroom becomes our uh, i mean lab our students are a kind of material so we 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 unless we practice that with our students we won't get the results so or maybe this is not but some people maybe once they get the results they publish okay they stop this they don't they don't try to improve it they don't try to take it to the next level so this is another um, attitude no, maybe when there's a new method yeah we'd like to understand the new method uh, do some kind of work on that yeah fine when you when you accomplish something like when you publish a book or publish a paper or um, present the paper yeah the, the the idea ends there again we come back to a classroom and have the same uh, classroom learning space a conversion learning space and uh, we don't have any scope or we don't we don't uh, try to convert the uh, the learning space into uh, immersion learning space so these are the attitudes uh, in terms of using or uh, using our understanding immersion learning yeah, one, I mean I let me conclude I'll take another five minutes uh, if people permit I'll, I mean not beyond that uh, immersion and technology. I said immersion is old and also a new method because immersion always kinds of grows with technology. When there when there are new technology, uh, yeah, there are a lot of new possibilities for immersion. So first thing is for oh, interactive simulations and virtual reality. See, uh, simulation is one thing where students can. I mean, uh, th th this improves immersion. Virtual nowadays you have virtual reality has become the order of the day. We have uh, sometimes I mean, we see students talking to the system. The system answers. We have we have a computer or a, or a software or an application which talks to us. So it, it gives us the immersion experience, very very personal immersion experience. So technology always helps immersion grow. 
But nowadays, the recent uh, games that are available in the market are kind of customizable. I can play the game in my own way. For example, there's a place where I have to save someone or kill someone. I can decide whether to save or kill. It depends on my emotions. So, I mean, uh, in course of playing a game, I, I create a story. If you, if you refer to the digital literature, the gamification is one method of creating digital literature because every game has a story in it. Every game is ba built on based on a story. When we play games, we immerse ourselves into a context where we create stories. And games nowadays are customizable, which gives um, uh, opportunity for the player to create uh, the story. You can play the game in a way you want. You know, many games, many games nowadays. Gamification, maybe some people have a kind of aversion towards game. They think game is one time consuming thing. They uh, People uh, get distracted and things like that. But if we plan properly, a game can be a, a context where uh, students can be immersed. Nowadays, there are a lot of software, a lot of applications which lets teachers create games uh, so that people, students play game. In course of playing the game, they learn uh, things. They have to answer questions to go to every, every level. So the game is nothing but a learning space. So gamification is one uh, uh, kind of avenue where immersion is improved. Second is personalization. Again, this goes with gamification. Personalization is I can have uh, a technology which is personalized to me. For example, I can interact with it. I can I can make the technology work uh, based on my my priorities. So I mean, again, a personal emotion becomes very strong because technology uh, gives us this personalization uh, benefit. I can personalize. Uh, for example, we, we we I can for example when I play a game, I can create an avatar. I can create an avatar and I can use my avatar to the to the person who wins, a person who uh, plays. I mean, who is a hero in that particular game. So personalization also helps people to uh, understand immersion better. The next is multimedia content. OK, this I'm not going to talk about this. Little, I mean, I'm going to show something um, uh, what what worked out in my class very well. And next thing is, OK, collaborative learning, which which is kind of which is indispensable uh, from immersion. This collaborative learning technology helps people collaborate easily. For example, I'm in Chennai. You people are there in different places, but we all are able to collaborate in terms of this. The technology has paved way for this. So uh, immersion, I mean, I mean, collaborative learning is one thing which is indispensable from immersion method, immersion theory, the immersion learning uh, atmospheres. So now, uh, as I promised, I'll uh, we'll move on to the next slide. Uh, maybe I'll I'll have to I'll show you this. There are two. I mean, I, I think you all can. I mean, do you all see this animation? Can someone come? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, what do you see uh, on the screen? Can someone uh, explain this to me? We can see two animals. You know, one running after the other. Yeah, one is chasing the other. I mean, uh, this was one of the activities I connected in the class and it worked out well. I gave this animation and I asked my students to come out with a story. So, they, I mean, I wanted them to uh, project it and narrate the story behind this particular animation. They went in uh, something very creative took place. And one um, people said different stories like uh, I mean uh, the uh, horse uh, is chased by the, the tiger no other go because tiger has tiger depends on the horse for his food and blah blah many many different stories. But one particular very interesting uh, uh, story took place uh, during the session. One of the students so he identified something. Sir, uh, one uh, thing see if you see take a closer look at these two animals, uh, the horse seems to be the horse seems to be a little happy. See see the face. It is not scared, but it's running. Whereas the tiger is a little annoyed. It is not happy. Uh, why? I mean, he said, okay, based on this, I have done a story. What he said, so what I'm going to do now is, okay, he, he did this. And then he said, okay, so let me take this particular character to the forward and bring these three characters. Okay, now see what happens. So this was his version of the story. He said, sir, unity, sir, see, when the horses are together, so they are happy, I mean, and nothing would nothing would happen to them. So this particular, I mean, he was doing it on the screen. So with these two uh, animations, he was able to create a story like, OK, see, uh, now the entire idea changed. He was able to give out a new story, which was different from all others, other version of the same, um, uh, other, other versions. He said, OK, see, uh, this is what exactly this technology uh, gives us. I can do this in a class. I was able to do this particular activity in a class where students 
uh, using animations, multimedia content, I was able to uh, create a context where they were, I mean, I, they immersed themselves into uh, a context and they came out with a lot of stories. And one a, a boy came out and he demonstrated the story on the screen. So this, is, I mean, this uh, this was one experience where I thought uh, this immersion works well, and students uh, they're very creative when you let them do uh, learning in the class. When they when you let give them an opportunity, they become very very creative. Anyway, I I mean uh, I'm done. I have one more slide to show. Yeah. So thank you. So now it's time for us to immerse our biscuits into tea. And uh, is there any questions I'm willing to, willing to answer? I'm Thank you very much for patiently listening. I don't know uh, if there's any questions in the chat. Let me check. Uh, if there are any questions, sir, you can uh, answer those questions. Or uh, I'm I'm done. I'm, sir, I'm done with my session. Yes, ma'am. Sir, I have a question. That uh, what is the app or the link through which we can uh, create such animations which you created? Just now. This is actually. I mean, I just Google. Google is the only source. Just Google, go to Google and say, uh, for example, if you want a tiger, I, how, I, how I used to get this, a tiger running GIF. A lot of GIFs that you can freely download. There are, I mean, can, I mean, uh, go to images, you have a lot of GIFs. There are no one particular website where I take all these things from. Whenever okay. I need a, a, an animation, I describe the animation in the search bar with GIF. So that oh. I get all this. Anyway. It's very okay. simple to get. <laughs> OK, thank you, sir. <laughs> So while uh, I was listening to your session, I was also you know googling about you know activities on this immersion, and okay. uh, I have found one you know named food safari uh, where yeah. they say that each student is assigned a dish native to a culture that uses mm. the language. For example, if it's a Japanese class, then sushi and ramen could exactly. definitely be on the list. There yeah. are lots of activities available online, and it's quite mm. interesting. Yes, uh, my experience is when I started using immersion in my classrooms. I mean, uh, it, it was not a monotonous class where a teacher talked all the time and students listen to a teacher and they wait for a chance to respond, nothing like that. See, this becomes, I mean, you give them a task, maybe classroom is a place where they come back doing the task and classroom is a place where they come and keep, make a lot of noise with their ideas. So classroom is not the place, this flip uh, model work with this immersion. I mean, you flip the classroom, so they, they uh, the classroom was a place where they come and ex I mean, share their experience in terms of learning outside the classroom. So this is a very uh, interesting kind of kind of flipping. Uh, classroom is not the place where students learn. No, classroom is a place where students perform. So nowadays, with all existing technology, with, I mean, as you rightly said, say Google can give you a lot of methods. So teacher can design tasks the student perform outside the class. They learn an idea they come to the class and perform a task inside the class where they talk about the idea they learned also so this uh, is a very interesting thing i would say that has helped me do a lot of lot of interesting uh, teaching in the class <laughs>